What's up, Skins Nation? How are you? How you be? What it do? How is you? What's going on? Hell to the Redskins. HTTR. Here we are back once again with another segment that must T Y T show of shows, pigskin facts, history and news. I am your host of host, Mr. Fred. Thank you for joining. Now, one of the Redskins take on the Green Bay Packers week 14 this Sunday at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. And we're going to do a little analysis on the game a little later. Um, right now, just pretty much want to look at um, what we have right now as far as our new draftees and, and pretty much what's going on and what's going to go on with the team. Um, we have new draftees, of course, young talent on the Redskins roster, which gives the fans a reason for hope. It's It's, it's been a dismal year, but there is hope and there are a lot of bright spots on the team. Um, there's about to be an exodus of older Redskin players, meaning that they are not walking on water or they are not walking on dry land through the Red Sea led by Moses. But by this exodus, I mean that they are leaving. They are going and being replaced. Um, so there's going to be an exodus of older Redskin players who are either injury riddled or they're coming to the end of their contracts or they're past their prime in their career. Uh, names like Trent Williams, Josh Norman, Jordan Reed, Vernon Davis, Colt McCoy, Alex Smith, Case Keenum, uh, Chris Thompson, maybe Ryan Kerrigan. Don't want to see them go. Um, Adrian Peterson, the list goes on. So just to name a few, hundred. So this will open up the team's salary cap, which will enable us to um, spend the money and, and, and get the right pieces that we need. And we do have pieces right now that I believe that are in place and there's, there's, there's more to come. But um, little by little, be patient, Redskin fans. Skins Nation will rise again. We will become a winning culture. We will no longer be the laughing stock of the NFL. And um, we're about to get, we're going to get a, a, a new coach. And hopefully um, Bruce Allen gets, gets the ax so we can start fresh and get rid of that losing stench that's been hanging around D.C. for years. Um the Redskins have dra drafted well the last few years. And by a lot of the new players that are playing, you can see that. You see a lot of the bright spots. You know, you see the Terry McLaurins and you see the 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 uh, Cole Holcombs, you know. So it's coming. It's coming. And these players are, are, are still learning. They're still developing. And um, I was listening to a podcast that I that I told you that I listen to from time to time, um, Louis T. And I really look up to him and I value his opinion on the Redskins. He has great insight. And, you know, he made an interesting comment today. He was saying, you know, some players, when they come in the league, bam, they, they take off, take off on the ground running. You know, they contribute to their team. You know, they help the team win. You know, they better the team. And then there's other players. It takes them a little longer to, to grow and mature. And everybody is not, not on the same um, maturity level. Sometimes it takes players a little, little longer. But basically, he was also saying, be patient. Because, um, you know, you got a player like Montez Sweat. It seemed like he got off to a slow start, you know, after, I don't know, um, seven or eight games he probably had like just two sacks and as of late he's come on he has five and a half sacks now so it it some players it takes nothing they just they take off in the ground running then other players it, it takes them a little time it takes them a little time and then one day the light bulb goes off it could be two years it could be three years but it happens 
So sometimes we can be very quick to judge players by their performance of the first 16 games of the season, and we don't give them time to develop, and, and we need to do that. Um, rookie quarterback Dwayne Haskins has shown a considerable amount of growth uh, from the first time that he was ever on an NFL field. He's shown considerable growth. Uh, his confidence has grown, I'm sure. He's won two games in a row now. Um, you know, but that first game when he was thrown in the Lions den against the Giants, where he threw interceptions, I mean, he wasn't prepared then. But uh, he's come a long way since then, but he still has a long way to go. Um, there's some things that he's he's doing well, but there's other things that he still hasn't gotten a hold of yet that he needs to. So it takes time. Um, there's much he needs to improve on, like um, make his throws more accurate, uh, reading the defenses, going through his progressions, checking down. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So footwork, pocket presence. I mean, there's still so much to work on, but there's, but what I notice about him, that every game, there is increments of improvement. There's, there's from the last game that he plays, there's, there's improvement and things that I'm seeing that he's doing better and better. He's getting more confident in the pocket. Um, he's taking better command of the offense. Um, He's starting to see the field better. The game is co coming to him slowly but surely. The game is slowing down a bit so he can adjust to it. So those things take time. And um, I'm just glad that he's starting now and he's going to start rest of the year. And he's just going to continue to get better and better. And I believe that he, he is going to be a star quarterback. And he's going to be something else when he gets on that level. When he gets to the point where he has mastered some things as a quarterback and he gets to that level of maturity, he's going to be something to reckon with. He's going to be a force to reckon with, and he's going to be a good one. Um, he's 2-2 two and two as a starter. He's completed 60 passes on 111 attempts, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, though his play hasn't been spectacular, he is playing with more confidence each week. He's making fewer mistakes. Um, like I said, he's seeing the field better and slowly developing into an NFL quarterback. And that's what you want. That's what you want. You want to see growth, even if it's increments of growth. He's not regressing and going backwards. He's going forward. And that's what you want, even if it's little by little at the time. And as a fan, that's, that's all that I ask for is to see improvement from week to week. Um, Darius Geis, after his 10 carry 129 yard performance against the Panthers, he had two touchdowns. He could very well be a home run hitter. Um, he has a heck of a stiff arm. That's for sure. Uh, he has a heck of a stiff arm. Um, Adrian Peterson still under contract in, in 2020. Bryce Love, who, who they drafted in the fourth round out of Stanford, uh, had an ACL injury. He was out. He's been out all year on injury reserve. He will be back next season. He will add power and speed to the mix in the Skins running back rotation. And that's going to be very interesting to see. Another piece of the puzzle that's yet to be fitted, but will be fitted. Um, wide receiver Terry McLaurin. Hey. What can I say? He's had a beast of a year. He's been a little quiet the last couple of games, but that's all right. He's going to be a star wide receiver in this league, and he is a beast. 4-3 um, speed. He has great hands. He runs excellent routes. He's got 42 receptions, 646 yards, five TDs. Um, he's, he's a threat. He's a big play receiving threat. And he's going to be for a very long time, and we have him. And he was a third rounder. He should have been a first rounder. Um, Kelvin Harmon, the sixth rounder out of NC State. He's starting to come around lately and play well. Started off slow, but now he's coming on strong, and he's building 
he he has i believe he already has a camaraderie built he already has a um connection with with Dwayne Haskins as does Terry McLaurin so the more they play the better and better they're going to get and the more dangerous they're going to be in the face of other teams and they're they're going to do some serious damage Calvin Harmon is a big physical receiver strong hands very athletic hard to bring down um we have a young nucleus on offense, and I'm going to call them Killer Elite. Killer Elite. These guys, Darius Geis, Dwayne Haskins, Terry McLaurin, Calvin Harmon, Steven Sims Jr., spectacular playmaker. Um, these guys are going to do some serious damage um, in the in the in the in the next season to come, and the season after that, they're going to get better and better. Um, no doubt about it. But um, on offense, there we, we need another. I would say we need another receiver, another big play threat. Um, our running back situation. Excuse me. Sorry. Our running back situation. I like it. Um. We just need to build on that offensive line during the draft and, um, you know, build a wall, build, build a perimeter to protect our quarterback and, you know, add a weapon, uh, add a weapon or two, give him more to uh, go to. Um, we need a tight end. Um, perhaps we'll find a, a, a weapon in the draft as far as a tight end. We need an offensive tackle, a left tackle. Um, so we need to refortify the line. It's, it's been playing well as of late, but it's not a good line. Um, defense, the Alabama wall, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, Matt Ioannidis, who's got seven sacks, Tim Settle, linebacker, Montez Sweat, five and a half sacks, 38 tackles. Cole Holcomb, standout rookie. Uh, I think he's second and in, in, in on the team and tackles standout linebacker. Um, I believe he was, a. I want to say a fifth rounder. I think either it was a fourth rounder or fifth rounder out of North Carolina. Very impressive. Um, safety Landon Collins, who we acquired from the New York giants. Excellent in the box leads the team in tackles. Um, he's got a sack and a half. Uh, he's great run support, comes up and, and makes tackles for losses. I mean, excellent. So he's he's living up to his billing. He might not have the interceptions that we hope for, but they'll come. Um, Quentin Dunbar, corner, um, becoming one of the stars in the league. Four interceptions, tied for second. Uh, cornerbacks with at least 200 snaps. Overall grade, his overall grade is 88.8. .8. That's first in the league. Coverage grade, 89.9. .9, first. Passer rating when targeted, 44.9. That He's fifth. Excellent stats. I give him the nod to go to the Pro Bowl. Quentin, uh, kudos to you. Keep up the good work and keep picking them off and keep shutting them down. Uh, Fabian Monroe, who's who's recently taken over for Josh Norman um, on the other side. On the other side, um, what can I say? Just they took he had a rough time in the slot, playing in the slot, which is now occupied by Jimmy Moreland, who is slowly but surely um, getting accustomed to playing as a nickel corner. But Fabian has been moved to. Um, corner on the outside opposite Quentin Dunbar taking over for Josh Norman and he's played his best football in the last two weeks he's come up with three interceptions almost ran one in for a pick six he's still learning and improving at the position and um we got if we keep it up we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end up having some classic monsters 
on defense. If we if these guys will get better and we add some more pieces, we can become a championship caliber defense and we can be some classic monsters in the league. You know, um, we 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 need we need a transformation from the end of this season to next season. You know, we need a we need a we need a we need a macho man type transformation. Just oh yeah, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying right now. When Washington Redskins the state of the team, yeah, right now is garbage, man, pure garbage, yeah. But you know what? We need to come and we need to get to become cream of the crop, yeah. Cream of the crop, yeah, Randy Macho Man Savage, yeah. And we become, once again, give us a year or two. We're garbage right now. We give us a year or two, man. Yeah. We become champs. Yeah, intercontinental champ. Washington Redskins become champions in the NFL. Give us two more years, man. Yeah. Two more years. Dig it. Oh, yeah. Dig it into a pigskin. Yeah. We need that inner Macho Man to come out. I don't know if that was a great impression, but who cares? But anyway, um, Redskins, Packers preview. The Green Bay Packers are 9-3. and three. Uh, They have a newly built defense, and Aaron Rodgers is still Aaron Rodgers. Aaron freaking Rodgers. He's still a threat to strike and score a touchdown from any part of the field. We know that. Very dangerous. Um, Redskins offense against the Packers defense. Former line linebacker Preston Smith, who we used to have, is now with the Green Bay Packers. And he is a formidable threat with 10.5 sacks. And you already know that this man is going to be geared up to play, play against us, his former team. Um, their defense is stout. Uh, they have a productive edge duo, a core of versatile linebackers, and a borderline elite secondary with explosive athletes like Jair Alexander, Darnell Savage, Kevin King, who has four interceptions and 13 pass deflections this season. So we're not facing a backup quarterback this week like we did in Detroit. We're not facing, I mean, two weeks ago against Detroit. We're not facing a backup quarterback in Kyle Allen like we did last week against the Carolina. This is the real deal. This is not a 3 and 6 team. This is not a 5 and 7 team. This is a 9 and 3 team we're dealing with. This is a whole new ball game. And we are not playing at home. We are going to Lambo where the Packers are very difficult to beat when they play at home. So, um if there's an advantage for the Redskins, if there's an advantage for the Redskins, yeah, Macho Man Randy Savage, yeah, the Redskins will be the cream of the crop, Skins Nation will rise again, yeah. If there's an advantage for us, it's the Green Bay interior line. Um, the Packers, they don't generate interior pressure very well. Um, their run defense is also vulnerable, the eighth worst in the NFL. So we should be able to run the ball effectively, utilizing Darius Geis, Adrian Peterson, if if so, Chris Chris um, Thompson. Um, so Dwayne Haskins is going to have to bring his A game against against the Packers. Um, because they have a very, they have a very good secondary. So he is going to have to be on point with his passes and he's going to have to make the right reads and he's going to have to see the field even better. Um, last game, there were a couple times where there were receivers open, but he was rushed in the pocket and he didn't see it. So hopefully he could scan the field a lot better, see the field better and pick up the open man and get the ball there. Um, don't know what the weather's going to be like. It's usually windy in Lambeau. It's usually cold as hell. So um, hopefully the Redskins will figure out a game plan to bottle up 
Aaron Rodgers and that very dangerous offense and figure out a game plan to offset their defense. So we can score, we can get in the end zone, and we can do our thing. Um, the Redskins over the last two weeks, the Redskins defense against the Packers offense. The Redskins over the last two weeks have been transformed into a more vicious and nasty unit. Uh, Washington's defense has accumulated sacks and turnovers at a massive clip. We had seven sacks last week against the Panthers. The week before, six sacks against Jeff Driscoll and the Lions. So we've had 13 sacks in the last two weeks. Very impressive. And I believe we had um, forced five turnovers. So that's pretty good. But the last two quarterbacks, like I said, were backups. Not so this coming week. Aaron Rodgers is Green Bay's franchise. It has been for a minute. Um, he has some go-tos in his receiving core that are very dangerous. Geronimo. Geronimo! Geronimo Allison. Ryan Grant, former Redskin receiver. Uh, Alan Lazard. Marquez Valdez Scantling, and of course, last but certainly not least, Devontae Adams, who will be paired up against none other than Quentin Dunbar this week. A very intriguing matchup to see who wins that. Um, the Redskins, who are who um, playing better in the secondary, they're communicating more, so they seem to be on the same page. Let's see how they match up against Aaron Rodgers and his receiving arsenal this week because this is going to be very, very interesting. And it's going to be interesting to see if that defensive line could could break through and put some pressure on Aaron Rodgers and uh, make him nervous, rattle him, throw quarterback hits on him, do whatever to get him off of his game. That's going to be one of the keys to the game. Um but the Redskins defensive line, which has been on a tear the last two games, look to continue that trend and wreak havoc and destruction on the Packers O line. So um, to get to Aaron Rodgers, turnovers, quarterback hits, sacks, pressures are the keys for the Redskins. Five things that I'm looking at that will be key to a victory for the Redskins. Number one, run the ball effectively and pass accurately. Get the ball to where it needs to go on time, efficiently, and get first downs. Keep the chains moving. We're going to have to run the ball effectively and keep that Packers offense off the field. Dwayne Haskins, many, many opportunities given. He got to take advantage of the opportunities and he's got to get the ball there more accurately. And these receivers, they need to catch the ball when it's thrown to them. They can't afford to drop passes. We got to, we got to catch the, the balls, guys. We got to catch. Oh, that didn't sound right. We got to catch the football. Um, take advantage of opportunities given to us. Score, number two, score early and often. We've got to score early and often on Green Bay. And third, and we've got to convert slash, convert third downs. So when we have the ball, we're going to have to take up massive amounts of time, and we're going to have to stick the ball in the end zone, and that will keep Green Bay on the, on the sideline. Um, key number three, keep Green Bay's offense... Stop it. Stop it. Keep Green Bay's offense off of the field. How do you do that? Run the ball effectively. Chew up the clock. Convert third downs. Pass efficiently. Pass accurately. And you'll move the chains. And that's how we keep that potent offense off the field. Number four, pressure Aaron Rodgers. Quarterback hits. Bow! Hit him in the mouth. Make him scared. 
hit him so hard that he gets fidgety in the pocket and he gets uncomfortable. Pressure Rodgers, quarterback hits and sacks. And last but not least, turnovers. We have got to get turnovers in this game. We have got to get turnovers in this game. We have got to force Aaron Rodgers into mistakes. Because if we don't, and he moves the ball efficiently, and if we can't move the ball, and they get us off the field on third downs, it is going to be a long, frustrating day, Skins Nation. You heard me. So those are a lot of the things that we need to do. Um, I gave you the five keys, the things that we need to do in order to win this game. Run the ball effectively, slash pass accurately, score early and often, convert third downs. Number three, keep Green Bay's offense off the field. Number four, pressure Aaron Rodgers. Quarterback hit sacks, hit him in the mouth. Kick him in the balls if you have to. Turnovers. Just like we did last week against Carolina. Force them into turnovers. We shorten the field and we win the field position battle. That's what we want in this game. I'm going to say with the core players that we have, give them a couple years to mature, add some more pieces. I think we're having a, a killer elite offense. And I think we'll have a classic monster defense. A championship caliber defense. That's what we need. Skins Nation, to me, you will always be La Champions. We are champions. We are the champions. And we will be back. Skins Nation will rise again. Believe that. Finally, last but not least, I'm going to give a prediction like I usually do. I'm not going against my skins. I don't care because any given Sunday, I believe that. So I believe the Redskins are going to go to Green Bay and shock the Packers. I am going to pick the Redskins to win this game 27 to 13. I will say the Redskins will have four turnovers. Aaron Rodgers will have three interceptions. Dwayne Haskins will pass his first game over 200 yards. I have him going 18 for 32, 205 yards, two touchdowns. Darius Geis, I have him running the ball 15 times and gaining 130 yards. AP, I have him coming in in a, in a um, supporting role. I have him running the ball 15 times, and I'll give him 110 yards and one touchdown. So, so with that said, I am your host of hosts, Mr. Fred, Pigskin Facts, History and News. Peace. Signing off.